When I first came to Exeter, I disliked Harper's discussions with a passion. <laughs> For me, it truly was a struggle to listen, formulate my own ideas, and be stressed that everything that I had said was being graded all at the same time. To add on to that, when I left class, I felt as if I could have learned the same material if I had just attended a lecture, and that it would have been so much easier if I had done so. For me, this was a big dilemma. But as I participated in more and more discussions, and began to ask myself, what is hardness really trying to teach me? I began to realize that hardness is not just a different way of teaching math or history. I began to realize that instead, hardness had its own set of lessons to be learned. And while it's true that hardness does teach public speaking and impromptu thinking, for me, the more significant lessons were the values of collaboration and diversity of thought. As I scan the faces of classmates around the hardness table, I see a myriad of different shapes, colors, and sizes. But what's more interesting is that I see a group of people with drastically different personal experiences. These personal experiences shape how we all think and act, contributing to the vast diversity of thoughts around the table. I remember once in my math class, we were discussing a geometry problem, which I had struggled to solve. Out of the blue, a friend of mine just proposed drawing two auxiliary lines that I never would have imagined. Slowly but surely, after drawing just these two lines, the rest of the solution fell into place. I was able to quickly find angles that I wasn't able to find before, and to be honest, I was stunned by its simplicity. After class, I asked my friend how he thought to draw these two lines, and he explained that he was inspired by the nice angles in the problem. In essence, something different about my friend's brain caused him to, to see these angles and draw the two lines that solved the problem. This single heartless experience has made me more open to others' perspectives as it has further reinforced the idea that people, no matter their differences, can in fact learn from each other. In reality, we are all humans, making us part of the same collective whole. We are in fact more similar than we are different, and we can view all our tiny differences as just small changes that make us different shades of the same human. With Harkness, we are able to harness these shades through collaboration, rather than lose them if we had instead been lectured ideas from the sole perspective of the teacher. Now, as students, let's be honest. There will be classes where we will learn material that we truly will never use in our life. But hopefully, what we will retain from Harkness is the impact of working with different people and their respective ideas can have. However, oftentimes society has trouble accepting that everyone's ideas are valuable. For example, it was not long ago that all women in the United States were restricted from voting, and even today, hatred causes people to denounce the ideas of entire groups. In order to demonstrate that just about anyone's ideas can be impactful, no matter the situation, consider one of the paramount scientific dilemmas of the 18th century. Ships were getting lost, People were dying, and trade became highly risky. This was all because once a voyager was out on the sea, they had no way of finding the locations because all they saw was blue. This made navigation virtually impossible. In order to solve this problem, the brightest scientists of the day, including Isaac Newton, got to work. They approached the problem from an astronomical point of view, 
attempting to use the relative distances of astronomical bodies in order to calculate one's position. But unfortunately, none of their methods were accurate. Who did find success was a clockmaker named John Harrison. His experience building clocks allowed him to approach the problem in an unconventional manner. Harrison used time in order to calculate one's position. Now, previous clocks were only able to keep track of time in very specific conditions, and certainly not under and certainly not in a shaky ship. But after years of work, Harrison designed a clock that was always able to keep track of the time and always displayed the current time in the town of Greenwich. With this, he proposed that all a voyager had to do to find where they were was wait until the sun was directly overhead, indicating noon. Then, they could compare noon with the current time in Greenwich on the clock. This difference in time zones allowed them to determine how far east or west they were from Greenland, giving them their so-called longitude. This solution would have probably never been thought of by the scientists, who were still struggling with the astronomical bodies. Harrison's ideas were of a completely different shape than those of the scientists, and because of this, were extremely valuable. In essence, a clockmaker's intuition solved the scientific dilemma of the century. Now, in the tight-knit community of Exeter, these ideas of collaboration and appreciating diversity may come easy. But unfortunately, the real world is divided. Republicans and Democrats continue to be split on a variety of issues, and countries with di different ideas struggle to find common ground. While all this is happening, we are faced with an even larger set of challenges. Natural disasters are intensifying, hunger continues to plague billions, and wars between rival nations are still prevalent. Instead of focusing on solving these issues, we often tend to discriminate against those that just seem too different from us. We forget all the things that we do have in common. The fact that all our little shade differences just make us different shades of the same human. <coughs> Discrimination, as the opposite of collaboration, limits the voices of those different ones. These are the voices that Harkness preaches that we should listen to and savor in order to solve these problems of the world today. In the grand scheme of things, it is more efficient for us to work together, collaborating as a whole diverse human race, rather than continue to be divided in this world full of problems that we all face. So, all in all, here at Exeter, we do not just learn differently. We also get first-hand experience of the power of collaboration. And so, the next time you're in a Harkness discussion, instead of focusing solely on the actual material you are learning, or on trying to get your four points in, I suggest that you take a step back and think about the role that varying shades of thought play on the, at the Harkness table. If we continue to make use of diversity rather than be divided by it, even as we step outside of Exeter, not only will we grow as individuals, but together we will be ready for the challenges to come. Thank you.